Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. Today, Ethan and I are gonna have another full day of cooking together in the kitchen. These are my favorite kinds of days. We're gonna be making uh, freezer meals together. And so far already this morning, when we woke up, we got two chickens right into the oven and cooked them and then gave them time to cool on the countertop so that we could pick them clean. We have a whole bowl of chicken meat ready to go and then we actually got the carcasses into a pot already and they're boiling down to make bone broth. And actually these are chickens straight out of our backyard, organic, homegrown chickens that we did last year and raised on our own property. So they're extra delicious. And with that meat, we're gonna be doing some chicken pot pies. We're going to be actually just freezing some of the meat pre-cooked uh, so that we have them for chicken quesadillas, chicken salads, anything like that that we might want some pre-cooked chicken ready to go for and then we'll be freezing bone broth and a couple of homemade lasagnas. So we have pretty high ambitions for today. Let's see how much of this we can get done. The very first thing I'm gonna do is get these vegetables washed, peeled, and chopped up so that they're ready for my first freezer meal, which is going to be a chicken pot pie. You can use pretty much any vegetable that you like in chicken pot pie. I have used all different kinds of vegetables in the past. Today I'm using carrots, potatoes, mushrooms, and celery. I'm also gonna throw some frozen peas in right at the very end. You could use green beans, corn, onions, sweet potatoes, pretty much any vegetable would be delicious. Now I'm gonna work on sauteing the vegetables. I'm gonna start with a little bit of butter and some chopped garlic, and then I'm gonna throw the vegetables in a little at a time just to get some color on them and get a head start on cooking. They'll finish cooking in the oven, but you just wanna give them a little bit of a head start. I'm gonna season them up a little bit with some salt and pepper. You can do a little bit of garlic powder. I'm gonna do some parsley, um, onion powder, whatever you like. You could do a little paprika, rosemary. If you had fresh herbs, whenever I have fresh herbs on hand, I like to add those as well. I just don't have any right now, but you could do rosemary, fresh parsley, anything like that would be delicious.
Now, like I said, I had already cooked up a chicken and pulled the meat off of it, and this is just the juice that was on the bottom of the pan from cooking the chicken. So I'm gonna pour that in for extra flavor. Now I'm gonna use the pan I cooked the chicken in just to whip up a little bit of a roux here. I'm gonna use some butter and some flour and make the sauce that they're gonna be in in the chicken pot pie. I'm also going to season the roux so that we have multiple layers of flavor. And I'm not using a recipe for any of this, I'm just using what I have on hand and making it work. Now I'm gonna put in the cooked chicken. I'm just putting in as much as I can without overflowing this pot. Now I'm gonna take these little freezer containers I have. I know they're plastic and a lot of people don't like using plastic, um, but when you freeze things, a lot of times I find I just need to use some plastic containers because it, it's easier to freeze in. And I'm gonna make all these individual servings of chicken and I'm going to freeze them. That way we have them for meals in the future if we wanna do chicken quesadillas, chicken salad, anything like that, these are perfect for and it just makes busy nights a little bit easier. It's not a full meal that's frozen, but it is a shortcut. So now I'll have all these containers of cooked chicken just ready and waiting for me in the freezer. Now with the very last bit of chicken that I have, I'm gonna chop it up and I'm going to make some chicken burritos to freeze. And this is one of my son's favorite meals and my husband's. And these are also really nice for my husband to be able to grab and bring to work if we don't have leftovers for him to bring for a lunch. He can have one of these burritos and just bring it to work and throw it in the oven. And it's a nice, warm, hearty meal for him.
I like to freeze these in a big gallon Ziploc bag. I'll label the bag with what's in it and date it and then I'll just fill it up with the burritos and throw it right in the freezer. I am gonna leave one of these out though. My husband's gonna bring one to work for lunch tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna get started now on the pie crust for my chicken pot pies. And I'm just gonna use my food processor to shred some frozen butter. I like to use a sourdough pie crust recipe that I have. I can link that down below. I have a video where I give the exact recipe for this, so I'll put that down below. The flour I'm using is from Costco. They have been having this really nice organic flour lately at our Costco, and I absolutely love it. It is by far the cheapest place I've found to get organic flour. I wait till the very last minute to throw in the frozen peas so that they don't get overcooked and mushy. I wanted to use all of these peas up because they were starting to get a little bit, they weren't freezer burned yet, but they were pretty close. All right, now I just have a bunch of different um, casserole dishes and I'm gonna fill them all up with the chicken pot pie and make as many chicken pot pies as we can before we run out of the filling. You can make chicken pot pie with crust on the top and the bottom. I've never done that. I always just put the crust on the top. I'm just gonna check and make sure that I rolled it out big enough to fit the casserole dish. And then I'll just keep going and cover all of these up with the pie crust. And I just make these very rustic. I don't do anything fancy. I just roll out the pie crust kind of push it down into the filling and then roll the sides in. 
It's very rustic, it's very homey, and it's delicious. I think it was Ina Garten who said, it's okay if things look rustic because you don't want them to look so perfect that people think that you just went and bought something from the store. You want them to know you put the hard work into it. I don't really care about that, but this is definitely rustic. So we ended up with four lovely chicken pot pies, and Ethan is just going to pop one right into the oven for me. I was busy doing something else. He's going to pop that in the oven so we can have it for supper tonight, and then he's going to help me out and go ahead and cover the rest of these up so that we can get them in the freezer. When I'm making freezer meals or batch cooking things, I like to um, cover them in foil first. So I wrap them in the tin foil, and then... After they're wrapped in tin foil, I also wrap them in plastic wrap. That is just the best way to keep them from getting freezer burned and to help them last as long as possible in the freezer. So that's how we do all of our freezer meals that are in casserole dishes like this. And they last a good long time like that. And then always make sure that you put a label on everything so that you know what's in there. Otherwise, you will forget. Trust me, I know from experience. And we're going to go put those right in the freezer. So for the very last thing that we're going to batch cook today, I'm going to do lasagna. Um, my kids are so spoiled. I've been making homemade pasta for a couple years now. I think Ethan had gotten me uh, my first pasta maker maybe like three or four years ago now. And I've gone through quite a few since then because we are hard on them. And I always make my lasagna noodles from scratch. It's just so much better. And it's not really hard to do. I don't actually follow a recipe for the pasta anymore. I just do one egg to one cup of flour and then salt and enough water to just make it all come together. I put it in my KitchenAid with the dough hook for a little while, but honestly, uh, pasta dough is just so heavy that it'll get it only so far and then you have to do it by hand. And at this point in the day, I was a little bit tired and I wasn't into um, kneading it for very long. I should have kneaded it for a lot longer, but here's a little cheater trick. If you're done kneading and you don't want to knead anymore and it still needs some more time, just cut off some pieces and start running it through on the biggest setting for your pasta maker and then fold it over, run it back through, fold it over, run it back through, and it 
it needs it basically. And then you'll know when it's done and it's ready to actually make the noodles because it'll just have like an, a really nice smooth consistency and it'll be holding together nicely and you can just tell that the texture changes. So see, I'm just running it through and then I fold it over and then I smush it down and I run it back through and we're not changing the setting at all on this. We're just using it on the biggest setting to basically knead these noodles. And you can see now that the consistency of this sheet of pasta has changed and Ethan is now um, using the dial there to make it thinner and thinner and thinner. And then when we get to about a six or a seven is where I like to get to on the dial, that makes a really nice lasagna. So we're just going to lay it out on some flour and let it dry a little bit uh, while we make all of the lasagna noodles. I'm gonna do the same thing for all of them. I'm gonna run them through several times just to knead it and get it to be a good consistency. And then we'll flatten them all out and we'll be ready to assemble our lasagna. And if you see all the little bodies over here on the right hand side are Berkey's over there. So the kids are going back and forth getting drinks of water. And it seems like when one gets a drink of water, they all need to get a drink of water. That's just the way it works. All right, so for my lasagnas, I do not use ricotta. I personally love ricotta. My husband and my daughter hate ricotta. So we call the truce and I make my lasagna with a bechamel sauce. The first person I think who I ever saw do this was Valerie Bertinelli on her cooking show. And um, I've been doing it ever since. So for the past probably decade, this is how I made lasagna. And trust me, it is delicious. Yes, it is not ricotta. But if you need to make a sacrifice, this is a good way to do it. I just do some butter and some flour, add in milk or heavy cream, and then lots and lots and lots of Parmigiano Reggiano. Now to assemble the lasagna, we're just gonna do a layer of sauce. And yes, I'm just using canned Costco sauce. We are out of homemade sauce and this is gonna work just fine. It's not my favorite, but it's what we have. So we'll do a layer of spaghetti sauce, then the lasagna noodles, a layer of the bechamel sauce, and then we're gonna do some mozzarella and then just keep going building that way. Some people do not put mozzarella in their lasagna. They do a pecorino or a parmigiano. Uh, that's not how we do it. <laughs> My husband likes a lot of cheese, so that's why he's in charge of the cheese, as you can see, and he is loading it on, and that's the way we like it. I actually think that lasagna as a freezer meal, it just gets better and better when it's in the freezer and you can take it out and put it in the oven after all those flavors have kind of melded together. It just gets more and more delicious. So if you're gonna batch cook anything, lasagna is the thing to do. Especially if you're gonna take the time to make homemade noodles, which I mean, they're not a lot of time, but it does make a mess. You might as well make a lot of lasagna and have it all assembled and ready to go. Then you don't have to make the fresh noodles all the time.
All right, so this is our dinner tonight. Our finished chicken pot pie, and it is delicious. I like to serve chicken pot pie with some homemade cranberry sauce. So around Thanksgiving, Christmas time, I stock up on tons of fresh cranberries. Then I'll just make cranberry sauce and freeze it in containers in the freezer and pull them out of the freezer when I pull the chicken pot pie out of the freezer and let it thaw on the counter. So it's still nice and cold, but defrosted by the time the chicken pot pie is done. It's a really good combination. Somebody once asked me, how many layers of lasagna do you make? And the answer is easy, as many fit in the pan. All joking aside, really, put as many layers as you can fit in the pan. The more layers you can do, the better the lasagna tastes. And because these noodles are fresh, you can pull the sheets of lasagna and kind of stretch them to make them work how you need them to. We're gonna finish off the top layer with just a little bit more pasta sauce and of course, a lot of cheese. Another thing we like to get at Costco is Parmigiano Reggiano or Pecorino Romano. Both of them, the price at Costco is far better than anywhere else you can get it around here. All right, now I'm just gonna assemble as many of these as I can. The last little loaf pan, it didn't get very full, but my daughter asked if she could have a little bit of lasagna with supper instead of the chicken pot pie because that's her favorite. So that one's just going in the oven for tonight. So just in one day between Ethan and I, we were able to make chicken burritos, chicken pot pie, fill the freezer with containers of pre-cooked chicken, and batch cook homemade lasagna. So we got a lot done in one day. Batch cooking freezer meal days are some of my favorites. I absolutely love to have these options in the freezer for days when we're busy or we're tired or we just don't wanna think about what we wanna make for supper. It saves a lot on having the urge to go out and uh, get takeout or something like that. So they're just great things to have in the freezer. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.